First I'd like to talk about the cylinder installation. What I have here is a two gallon cylinder. Uh, decided on this to keep the cost below a thousand dollars on the entire system. Uh, the white cylinder there costs two hundred dollars. The straps that you see for the mounting, they've also got a rubber a liner uh, between the metal strap and the metal tank, but those uh, brackets another one hundred and twenty five dollars the valve you see here I'll zoom in on it seventy five dollars for the valve so the total for the tank brackets and valve four hundred dollars with the PVC feed through and that cu uh, coupler you see above it uh, nuts and bolts to hold the bracketing on probably add another thirty dollars so essentially four hundred and thirty dollars for what you see here had I gone with a 7.4 gallon solution, uh, that would have cost $1,000, $600 more than this setup. That uh, 7.4 gallon solution would have come in at about $1,600, $1,700. But I wanted to keep my cost below $1,000, so I went with the 2 gallon tank. Another important issue I wanted to discuss is the uh, encasing or bagging of the uh, valve area. What, uh, what's typically done is uh, this whole area around the top of the tank down to the PVC uh, feed through is surrounded with 8 mil plastic. And what that does, that, that protects the interior of the car in case of a gas leak. Uh, so any uh, seepage or leakage from these connections you see here, and this is considered the trunk is considered the interior of the vehicle. So uh, any uh, leakages from this area would then be carried out through that feed through hole and go out to the bottom of the car and, uh, and outside the vehicle. So that's a safety uh, mechanism and that'll be put on later. So 8 mil plastic surrounding uh, the whole area from the top of the tank down to the feed through. The rest of the system I'm going to show you is the $550 kit that you see on eBay. Uh, the first component here is that regulator, and as you can see, that uh, gold line coming in on the top is the uh, uh, 3,000 comes from the tank that you saw in the trunk previously, 3,000 psi, and uh, of course over here, see if I can hold the camera still. Uh, over here is the uh, pressure gauge, but more importantly, it has a electronic feedback mechanism that uh, tells you if the tank is full or not. So that gauge is used primarily to um, work an LED indicator inside the car to uh, show if the tanks fall. Uh, here on the on the regulator uh, you have your low, high pressure in right here, low pressure and you can barely see it here, I'll see if I can zoom in on it, but it's down here at the bottom and you can see that hose clamp right there. That's where the low pressure uh, gas comes out and uh, goes into the air intake on the vehicle. The solenoid you see right there switches the high pressure uh, on and off. Basically it allows the high pressure into the uh, into the regulator when you turn the system on. Another couple of important features, if I can see it, zoom in on it here, are the uh, radiator hoses. This actually splices into your uh, heater core and feeds uh, hot coolant into this regulator to keep it from freezing. Uh, the process of the uh, gas going from Low, high pressure to low pressure uh, causes a big temperature drop and that would result in any of the mechanical components in here getting uh, frozen and locked up. So by running the car's coolant through this regulator uh, they keep it nice and warm and all the mechanical stuff works on the regulator like it's supposed to. I've detached the controller so you can get a little bit better look at it. What this controller does is it monitors the pressure gauge so it knows the tank pressure. In addition, it, it uh, controls the valve that turns the high pressure on and off to the regulator. Uh, it also monitors the O2 sensor, tachometer, and controls the uh, stepper motor valve that uh, controls the gas flow into the air intake on the car. This little module you see here is the emulator module and really what it is is just a little box of relays that turn the gasoline fuel injectors on and off. 
I've got it out here, got one out here in the open, but it's actually uh, mounted right back in there behind the intake manifold. But it's just uh, back in there too tight to see. This module, when the CNG switches on, the relays open and disconnect your gasoline fuel injectors. They patch in with a cable from the bottom, right, connects right in there. And this is one of the connectors on the cable. If you've got a four cylinder, there's four of them. Six, there are six. Eight, uh, you get uh, two, four uh, two four cylinder cables, I believe. And the way this connects in is it goes in patches in place of your original fuel injector cable. Right there is the fuel injector cable, and I'll remove it. I remove it, and then I connect in the mate, identical mating connector from the emulator cable. There, snaps in place. Then, this end of the cable looks just like the fuel injector, and if I can manage this, then, yeah, this connector connects into this one and you get the idea so that actually uh, interfaces the relay from this module to the fuel injector turns them all on and off at once so they all get disconnected when it goes to CNG they all reconnect when you switch back to gasoline down here where the little blue splice connector is uh, this is where the controller connects into the O2 sensor and then over here the yellow wire connected to the blue splice connector connects into the uh, tachometer and uh, hooks up the CNG controller uh, to the tack so you can see what your so it knows what your speed is. And then right up here with this three-quarter inch hose, if you remember there was a three-quarter inch hose coming out of the bottom of the CNG regulator. And that's the same hose. And that leads right up here to the air intake. And inside that uh, uh, accordion type hose there is the little plastic cylindrical mixer that you got with the kit. And the gas flow, natural gas flow into it is modulated or controlled through this uh, stepper motor that you see. Stepper motor. It's a stepper valve is what it is that you see right here. Right down here in the front bumper you can see where I mounted my fill port. And this is where I fill the car with natural gas. So the line runs from the vent coming out of the trunk, out this way, over here, and I'll see if I can pan out here a little bit, we can see it a little better, down this way, this is the 6 millimeter steel tubing supplied with the kit, down this way. One of the drawbacks to the 6 millimeter tubing is uh, the folks that sell it to you don't seem to be able to supply couplers for it. So I had to order those from Swage Lock. Special order, took two weeks. Uh, I think they were $11 each. You'll see one coming up right here. Right there. This one, and up here. Right here. Now this is going up to the fill port. You can see the green cover on the fill port, which you saw in the earlier video, or earlier part of the video. I'll zoom in on it. This one has a valve with it. I don't know why, but uh, I guess has a check valve built. Has a check valve built into the uh, into the fill port, so I don't know why it needs the uh, valve handle on there, but that's just the way it came. Now I'll go underneath here to get a better view. There we go. Down here, right underneath. There we go. Back a little bit. And there. There's the fill port. Not a lot of light on it. But you can see the line, line going off to the left is the one that gold line that goes up to the uh, regulator. And the one off to the right goes back to the tank. And then uh, straight up there is the uh, fill port. And I'll stand up here and show you that. There we go. And there's our fill port right there. See if I can work the camera here. There it is. 
fill ports there. Okay, it's new uh, CNG LNG station in Salt Lake, and I'm gonna gas up my car here with my $1,000 CNG converter. There we go. It's new modern dispenser, more like a typical gasoline dispenser. Great, it's ready for me to fuel up. cover on the nozzle, snap it in place, stop, and then I come over here and lift the lever to fill it. It only has a two gallon tank so it will fill up real quick. Also, $1.29 on the price. $1.29 a gallon. So for a $1,000 investment in converting my vehicle, which still runs on gasoline, by the way, $1,000 investment, I'm able to uh, fuel for $1.29 a gallon. It's finished. That's simple. Okay. I brought the changeover switch out into the engine compartment so you can hear what it sounds like when it as it goes from CNG to gasoline. Right now it's running on natural gas. I'm going to switch the car back to gasoline. Let's see if you can hear what it sounds like. Now we're back on gasoline. I'm going to switch back to enable CNG, but remember we have to be at 2,000 RPM to activate it. There. It's ready to go into CNG mode when we reach 2,000 RPM. I'm going to reach up here and rev the engine, and you'll hear the changeover. You might even hear the click. There we go, right here. RPM's coming up. When I let it down, you should hear it switch over. Oh, one more time. I didn't take it high enough. There was the click and it switched over. If we look at our CNG gasoline uh, switch over here, you can see now it's on CNG. Press it again. Now it's back on gasoline. Put the CNG changeover switch in this little drawer down here. Never use it, but well, now I can put it to good use. You can see an LED on the left blinking, the uh, orange LED or yellow LED, and that indicates that uh, it's going to go into, it's going to switch over to CNG as soon as the RPM hits 2000. And the little LED on the top means I'm almost out of gas. Uh, CNG and the green LED on the right is uh, stays on when you're in gasoline mode. We're in gasoline only mode. Now we're in CNG mode. I'll rev the engine to 2000 RPM and it'll switch over to running on natural gas. It goes solid. Maybe you heard a little engine noise change there. And there it is. Now it's running on natural gas.